Hi everyone, welcome back to Karen Puzzles. Today, I am going to be doing a puzzle of a puzzle. 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 This is the Jigsaw 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 Puzzle, and it is honestly one of the funniest things I have ever seen. As you can see, the picture on the Jigsaw Puzzle is of the jigsaw puzzle box and then it just keeps going and going and going and going and going and going. <laughs> this was designed by Darren Cullen and it's also in stock on the site Maths Gear where they sell lots of math related products. And the guys over at Maths Gear are actually the ones who sent it to me. The worry with puzzles like these where it's not made by a full on puzzle company is whether the quality is gonna be good or not. <coughs> Ketchup puzzle. <coughs> All right, let's open it up. Let's take a look. All right, so my very first impression is that there is a lot of puzzle dust. Like, look at that. That's just from dumping out the pieces. And I'm sure as I go through and sort them, it's even more, it's just gonna accumulate. But otherwise, the pieces seem fine. You know, they're a perfectly adequate thickness and the image looks a tiny bit pixelated, but really not too bad. I am seeing all of the standard piece shapes, nothing too crazy, although all of the shapes of the different knobs are looking fairly similar, so we'll see if we have any issues of them, you know, not seeming to fit where they go or fitting where they don't actually go. You know what I mean. <laughs> My other first impression is that there is a whole lot of black and gray which I guess I should have expected going into it because we do have the picture right here and there is no color at all. But really quick, let me just show you a close up of the box. As you can see, the box design is really simple and it is perfectly replicated through the image. Here is what is on the sides. Um, again, not a lot of information. There's uh, the credit to Darren who invented this. And then here are the other sides. Again, really simple and there's nothing on the back. So, okay, I think that's it. Let me, let me get started. <laughs> Wish me luck. All right, so the sorting took 25 minutes. I divided them up into five piles. So here we have all the edge pieces. Here we have all the solid gray pieces. Here are all of these solid black pieces. Over here are any pieces with like writing on it. And then here are all of the pieces with any kind of you know, something happening on the piece. I'm actually not gonna start with the edge here because as you can see, a lot of the edge pieces are just solid black. So I think that would be pretty tricky. Instead, I'm gonna start with the pieces with text on them and try to get kind of the structure of the puzzle laid out. I did not realize just how many solid black pieces there would be and solid gray. But for now, you know, I'm just gonna do the easy part. So <laughs> I'm gonna get started on that.
And I'm back with the easiest part of the puzzle, now finished. Getting to this point took me about two hours and I decided to keep track of my times on the most colorful paper I can find just to bring a little bit of color into this very grayscale puzzle. I will say that one thing that I didn't expect that made it a lot trickier is that you can see that on the sides of each picture of the box, it's also a recursive picture where you can see the entire box. So I had to separate out like this little box from this little box, from this in here, from this, from this. <laughs> so I was definitely like really using my brain, getting it together, but definitely like totally doable to this point. And I say to this point because so far, Everything has had enough going on on each of the pieces that I can be fairly certain that all of this is correct. But like up here, when I was working on this section, these could kind of rearrange in any configuration and they all seem to fit. Like I was looking at it really closely to try to get them fitting as tightly as possible, like trying it in all these different spots. So now that I just have this like white line and then after that, just a solid colored pieces. Oh, oh no, don't fall, don't fall. <laughs> I feel like it's only gonna get way trickier. And I mean, especially with all of these black pieces where there really is no color difference at all. Like here with the gray, you can see that we have different colors of gray, so I should be able to figure that out. But I mean, who knows if I'll actually get all of these black pieces in the correct spot. Also, one more thing. I thought that the picture on the puzzle was just this inside this box, but no, the entire front of the box is the puzzle. <laughs> And I just think that is so funny. I think this puzzle is so hilarious. <laughs> All right, it is only, uh, what is it, 1.30. I just took a little break, so I'm ready to get back to it and hopefully finish it up this afternoon. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So I really thought that I was starting off the year with a relatively simple puzzle, but all of those gray pieces were so brutal. That was two and a half hours straight of just like slightly different colored gray puzzle pieces. And there are two things that are making this particularly difficult. So number one, what I realized is that this half of the puzzle is the exact same cut as this half of the puzzle only flipped 180 degrees. And so every single piece shape appears twice, once on this side and once on this side. So when I was doing the middle of the puzzle where there is a lot going on and I could really use the image to put it together, that wasn't a problem. But with all of the gray pieces, I kept having a piece that fit perfectly, but the colors didn't quite line up. And so I had to put it on the other side and I kept having to flip pieces back and forth. And actually, now that I'm looking at it, I do see two pieces that are in the wrong spots that I have to flip. It's really subtle. I don't know how well it'll pick up on camera, but this piece right here, you can see that the shadow doesn't quite continue, like this corner is a little too light. And then if we come up here, 
Same piece, looks fine at first, but this corner is a little too dark. So I'm just going to pop that out. And then if I swap them, you can just see how much more clean that looks. And same on this side, you can see that it's flipped upside down. And then the other issue that I'm having is that a lot of the pieces fit a bit loosely. And so it's really hard to tell whether it is in the right spot or not. And so this final piece that I put in, um, again, I don't know how much you can see on camera, but like this corner doesn't quite look right. That corner doesn't quite look right. So I was playing with like turning it around and it still fits fine that way. I think it's a little better the other way, but it still fits. But at this point, I'm kind of just like, I don't really care anymore. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine, it looks fine. But all that being said, now I have to decide, am I actually going to finish all of the solid black pieces? Like, is that even worth it? There aren't as many black pieces as there were gray pieces, but even still, it would just be like brute force, one right after the other until I get it looking okay. So it is 4 p.m. now. I think I might call it a day and then decide how I feel in the morning and see if I actually wanna get back to these or not. I really wanted to finish it. <laughs> I wasn't planning on not finishing it. I don't want my first puzzle of the year to be a total failure. <laughs> Good morning, welcome to day two, which should hopefully be a lot shorter than day one. We're not going for perfection here. I just need to finish this. <laughs> Did I say how early it was? It's only just after eight, so I'm getting right to work this morning. <laughs> oh, and I am not wearing the exact same thing as yesterday. I just own two of these shirts, like a cartoon character, and the sleeves don't like push around the pieces when I reach for them, so that's why I like this. So anyway, let's work on the puzzle. <laughs> Well, <laughs> two hours and 15 minutes later, and I finished it. Mostly, sort of. There are definitely a couple pieces in here that don't fit totally perfectly, but it's close enough. I heard he spent so much time trying to rearrange things to get everything perfect, and it's just not happening. I'm just gonna say, <laughs> close enough. <laughs> oh man, that was so much more difficult than I thought at the end there. In total, it took me seven hours and five minutes to finish, which like honestly, compared to some of the other puzzles I've done on this channel, is not bad at all. I will say though, the reason why I powered through at the end is mostly because I'm listening to a really good podcast and I just wanted to keep listening to it. It's all about the Elizabeth Holmes like Theranos trial. It's so interesting. So I got through so many episodes while working on this puzzle. So overall, I still think this puzzle is just so funny, so original. I will say the quirk where it's like cut in half and it's the same cut but reversed 180 degrees, I'm honestly not mad at that. I did actually use that in some parts to kind of follow along and figure out what piece shape I was looking for next. The reason they do that sometimes is because it means the die only has to be half as big to cut the puzzle. So they'll cut it, 
half at a time. And sometimes you end up with it not meeting perfectly in the middle, but in this case, it meets up like seamlessly. So I really don't have an issue with that. But there are a few things that I do have an issue with. And I think this could have been improved while still keeping the exact same concept. You know, the puzzle was really fun right up until about this point. You know, right before I got to all of the expanses of gray and solid black. So maybe they could have added some color, maybe by putting colored lights on each side of this photo, like they do in some like fashion photo shoots. And then you'd have more interesting color gradients, which would have made it a little easier to put together. And then on the background, what I would have done is put a really subtle texture, like maybe even just a pattern of puzzle pieces in a really dark gray. It wouldn't have taken away from the design of the puzzle, and it just would have given a little bit of visual information so that you could be sure that the piece you're putting in is actually correct. And then onto the quality of the puzzle pieces themselves. Now, I know that for a one-off novelty puzzle like this, it really doesn't make sense to go with a super high quality manufacturer, but <laughs> this one is pretty bad. The black pieces have a lot of scratches on them, which is really noticeable. As I've been saying, a lot of the piece shapes are very, very similar to each other. There was a ton of puzzle dust, which honestly doesn't bother me that much, but I know for a lot of people that really bothers them. And the pieces do not lock together at all. Like you cannot pick up or move large sections without it just crumbling apart. And then on the box, it's made of a really thin cardboard. And so because I had another puzzle stacked on top of this one for a while, I actually ended up with this crease in the corner where it kind of gets indented down. Not a huge deal, but I like to keep my puzzles in, you know, nice condition and creases like that just kind of bug me. And it really only happens with really thin cardboard and low quality boxes. So all that being said, I know that sounds bad, but honestly, like it's still mostly doable. And I really do think this is a really fun find for people like me who like to collect interesting puzzles. I also think it could be really fun for like a white elephant party. <laughs> this would be a really funny like gag gift. But I'd honestly be surprised if there is a single other person out there besides me who actually finishes this puzzle. <laughs> So I would love to know in a comment, do you think you would have finished this puzzle or would you have just called it a day and packed it up after finishing the fun part? So of course, I'm going to link this down below. It is currently available. You can get one if you want. It is made and sold in the UK. So to all of my British viewers, uh, this would be really easy to get your hands on. To everyone else, you'd probably have to do international shipping. But thank you again to Math Skier for sending this to me. And of course, to Darren Cullen for designing it. So your code word for the comments, if you've watched all the way to the end of the video is jigsaw. But just like the front of this box, use the word jigsaw as many times as you possibly can. All right, this video was a little bit all over the place, but thank you for watching and happy puzzling. I will see you all in the next one. Oh my God, you know what else I was just thinking? So you know how in the song, The Monster Mash, we never actually get to hear the monster mash? In this puzzle, we never actually get to see the jigsaw 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 puzzle because it's just itself over and over again. Anyway, all right, I think that's it.